apart from the fact that New Zealand's ancient native frogs are gorgeous little creatures with all sorts of weird and wonderful features, frogs worldwide tell us a lot about the health of our planet. You see, frogs are environmental indicators, so their survival tells us how clean and green our backyard is, which gives us all the more reason to protect them. Here at Auckland Zoo, the National Frog Recovery Program is going ahead in leaps and bounds. They're unique in the world. You know, a lot of our frogs are terrestrial, so they're adapted especially to live on land, and they've got some amazing uh, life stages that separate them out from the other frogs that most people would be familiar with. They don't lay their eggs in the water, and the tadpole stage actually takes place within the egg and then they hatch out of the egg as a little froglet and the really cute thing is they jump up on dad's back and he looks after them for about two months carrying them around and yeah it's incredible. Why is it that frogs generally are known as environmental indicators? Amphibians generally are very sensitive to changes in their environment. Uh, the frogs themselves they, they breathe through their skin and their skin's very uh, exposed and sensitive. So anything like chemicals entering the environment or climate change or um, sort of challenges like that will affect them very easily. We're working with the DOC Frog Recovery Group and we're actually trying to establish in the facility here a captive population of Archie's frogs. Just with the disease threat we want to establish an insurance population but also long term be able to breed them to support the wild frog populations. This is called the Frog Mirror Stage. It's a pretty neat contraption that was developed in the Waikato Conservancy to take a photo of a native frog to enable you to then identify the frog from its markings. Yep. We've got a wee model frog here and then simply it's a matter of sliding the platform there and hoping that the frog is going to behave itself. Do they jump off? It, it varies. Quite often they're, they're pretty good because their natural instinct is to sort of freeze and blend in. They tend to keep still but it, it does also depend on temperature because the warmer they get, the more active they become. So we get a focus and that's our photo. One of the interesting things about the behaviour of our native frogs is that they don't move around very much. So you can almost bank on the fact that if you go back to the same place you saw it last time, you'd hope to see it there again. This is a photo I took earlier and it just shows the four views you get in the one shot. And over here we have a little show just to demonstrate and what we're looking at is, is two dark markings and whether they have a solid connection through here or a broken line here. And then we as assign a code. Zeros for a broken line and ones for a, a full connected line. And again, just a summary of the whole frog. This is his code number and that's because of the markings that have, and have not got connections. They use photo identification of the individual markings on the back of the whale sharks. They do them for humpback whales, tails, which means we don't need to mark the animal ourselves. We can rely on their beautiful markings instead. Not many people have ever been lucky enough to see one of our quirky and tiny native frogs. But with the help of the National Frog Recovery Program, their chances of survival are being increased. And when the frogs are doing well, we know we'll do well too.